Now in kidneys, there are structural and functional units called as nephrons. Nephrons are also called as uriniferous tubules. They are minute tubules which actually filter blood to produce urine. There are a million nephrons in each kidney. A million is 10 lakhs. Now, if you see the structure of nephron, a nephron contains two parts. One is the renal corpuscle or Malpighian body. And other is renal tubule. A nephron basically contains two parts. One is the renal corpuscle, also called Malpighian body. Other is called as renal tubule. Now, when I say the renal corpuscle, also called Malpighian body, it includes two parts. One is glomerulus. Other is Bowman's capsule. Now, if you observe this area, this area, you can see this is the blood vessel which is bringing blood to one nephron. So this is bringing blood. So this blood capillary is called as efferent arteriole. It starts with the efferent arteriole. It is branch of renal artery. So renal artery, after it enters into kidneys, it divides three divides several times and it forms efferent arteriole. So this efferent arteriole is bringing blood. Now after coming to the nephron, it breaks down and forms a group of capillaries. This is an arteriole, right? So this arteriole, it breaks and branches to produce a group of capillaries. This group of capillaries is called as glomerulus. It's called glomerulus. Now again that capillary is combined together and form a blood vessel. So this blood vessel is called efferent arteriole. It starts with e efferent arteriole. So this efferent arteriole is taking out blood from nephron. So efferent brings blood, efferent takes blood out from the nephrons. In between, the bunch of capillaries is called as glomerulus. Now, this glomerulus is present in a cup-like structure. The cup-like structure is called as Bowman's capsule. See that cup-like structure. Now, if I take that area, so this is efferent arteriole and this is efferent arteriole hmm? and this capillary is you, you can see that capillary is there capillaries group of capillaries is called glomerulus glomerulus is present in a cup a cup like structure the cup like structure is called as bowman's capsule Now see the difference between the diameter of efferent arteriole and efferent arteriole. The efferent arteriole is larger in diameter, efferent arteriole is smaller in diameter. So naturally more blood comes inside the glomerulus and less blood is going outside. So there is a pressure built up inside the glomerulus. So under this pressure, some fluid is filtered from glomerulus into Bowman's capsule. When I say glomerulus, it is bunch of capillaries. So, bunch of capillaries, each capillary is lined by simple squamous epithelium only. And here and there, pores are present. Now, if I take a capillary hmm, in glomerulus, I am taking a capillary. And if I observe the cells, 
you can see it is a capillary capillary means it, it is covered by a simple squamous epithelium and there are pores the pores are called as fenestrae the pores are called as fenestrae fenestrae are 0.1 micron in diameter so very very small pores are present in the wall of glomerulus now through that pores substances have to enter into bowman's capsule under high pressure that is built up inside the glomerulus now bowman's capsule it is again made up of two layers this is the visceral layer this is the parietal layer it is also made up of simple squamous epithelium and wherever i say simple squamous it is a single layer of flat cells so here also you can see flat cells so this is one layer which invaginates and comes outside actually it's a single layer it's a single layer but after invasination and coming outside the epithelium is two layers but actually it's a simple epithelium only now this is parietal layer this is visceral layer the visceral layer some of the simple squamous epithelium they forms cells called podocytes now if i observe podocytes podocytes they they form foot like process the foot like processes are called pedicels this cell is called podocyte i'm speaking about this area this area hmm? in the visceral area area of cells facing towards the glomerulus you can see cells have developed foot like process called pedicels now these cells are called podocytes now when different cells when two three cells when the cells are, they come in opposite direction like that gaps are formed the gaps are called slit pores they are called slit pores they are also called filtration pores the filtration pores are absolutely small 0.006 0.007 microns in diameter so in case of glomerulus there is there are fenestrae in case of slit pores which are present in between the pedicels of podocytes there are slit pores so you can see some substances are filtered from glomerulus towards the bowman's capsule now the bowman's capsule opens into proximal convoluted tubule it is called proximal convoluted tubule proximal closure distal little far away so this is little closure to the renal corpus now we we finished renal corpus what is renal corpus this area is renal corpus renal corpus is also called malpighian body it contains two things glomerulus and bowman's caps that's glomerulus this is bowman's caps now we are going to renal tubule the second part renal tubule renal tubule includes three parts the proximal convoluted tubule that's one followed by henle's loop followed by distal convoluted tubule convulsions convulsions means so it is highly twisted or folded so you can see convulsions here you can see convulsions here this is closure to malpighian body so called proximal this is little far away that's why this is distal convoluted tubule proximal and distal convoluted tubules in between you can see a hairpin bend the hairpin bend is called as henle slip so that is the henle slip so this is the henle slip from 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 here downwards this is all henle slip 
it has got two limbs one one is the descending limb other is the ascending limb so th this is the descending limb that is the ascending limb so this limb is the descending limb and that limb is the ascending limb so proximal convoluted tubule opens into descending limb it makes a hairpin bend like like bend called as henry's loop then there is an ascending limb which opens into distal convoluted tubule now proximal convoluted tubules proximal convoluted tubules they contain simple cuboidal epithelium contains in, in proximal convulsions there is a simple cuboidal epithelium and on the epical side epical side means side facing towards the lumen it has got microvilli you call it microvilli or cubical cells with brush border cubical cells with brush border so that's the throat indicating that area that area lot of reabsorption occurs so cells contains more of mitochondria so there is lot of mitochondria inside you can see mitochondria and there is brush border indicating there is there is absorption reabsorption here which are filtered is not simply pushed outside many things are taken back so this area much of reabsorption occurs and when you see the much of the descending limb much of the descending limb is thin actually and a part of the ascending limb also ascending limb we have got thin and thick segments actually or right, correctly right, right the descending limb and part of ascending limb they are very thin and uh, that part is lined by simple squamous septilia squamous septilia so descending limb and ascending limb see ascending limb you can find thin segment thick segment up to thin segment it is made up of simple squamous septilia the remaining part of ascending limb is made up of simple cuboidal epithelium to low columnar cells but there is no brush border there when, when i take this area this is the thin segment this is the thin segment this is the thick segment thin segment simple squamous descending limb simple squamous but if you see the thick segment if you see that area again you will find simple cuboidal epithelium but there is no microvilli there is no brush border or some cases there is there are columnar cells but columnar cells they are not very long they are little shorter only so there is a low columnar cells or simple cuboidal cells are seen in the thick segment of ascending limb of henley's tube now i have come to the distal convoluted tube now again initial parts if i take simple cuboidal epithelium is continuing in the initial region of distal convoluted tube but when you come to the lateral half the second half of distal convoluted tube you will find two different types of cells some cells without microvilli some cells with microvilli much of the cells are without microvilli they are called as principal cells some cells they have got microvilli they are called as intercalated cells so in distal convoluted tubule in the second half if i take you will find two different types of cells more of the cells are principal cells they are simple cuboidal epithelium without brush border and they have got receptors for adh they have got receptors for aldosterone but a few cells are intercalated cells a few cells they are intercalated they are they are simple cuboidal epithelium with brush border so functionally and structurally they are different both have got different functions similar two types of cells are also present in the collecting duct also now the distal collecting tubule they open into initial collecting ducts
the distal convoluted tubule they they open into distal collecting ducts uh, they open into initial collecting ducts they are called initial collecting ducts or arched collecting ducts and they form arch like you know so now from each nephron one initial collecting duct is coming some 7 to 10 initial collecting ducts they open into a straight collecting duct they open into a straight collecting duct right from one nephron one initial collecting duct or arched collecting duct has come some 7 to 10 arched collecting ducts or initial collecting ducts combine together to form a straight collecting duct now all the straight collecting ducts present in one pyramid they combine together to form a duct of bellini is also called papillary duct because it's opening near the papilla remember up to here that area above that is present inside the cortex and this area is present inside the medulla that means the renal corpuscle proximal distal convulsions and the initial collecting ducts are all present inside the cortex the descending and henley the descending and ascending limbs of henley's tube and the collecting ducts and the ducts of the straight collecting ducts and the duct of bellini they are present inside medulla so all the straight collecting ducts present in one medullary pyramid combine together and a single duct is formed that is called papillary duct also called duct of bellini so it is opening at the region of papilla into a minor calyces so you can see glomerulus is surrounded by simple squamous epithelium so is the case of bowman's capsule also podocytes are present in the wall of bowman's capsule with slit pores or filtration pores fenestrae are present in the wall of blood capillaries proximal convulsions simple cuboidal epithelium with brush board for reabsorption Descending limb of Henle's loop and thin segment of ascending limb is lined by simple squamous epithelium. Thick segment of ascending limb is made up of simple cuboidal epithelium without brush border or some cases low columnar cells also. Same condition, simple cuboidal will continue in the initial parts of distal convoluted tubule. In the later half of distal convoluted tubule and the initial collecting ducts and the collecting ducts, you will find two different types of cells, the principal cells and intercalated cells. More principal cells without brush border, but a few intercalated cells with brush border. And in the duct of Bellini, you can see simple columnar epithelium. It, it opens into minor calyces at the region of medullary papilla. Now, what is the fate of efferent arteriole? I told you efferent arteriole is the branch of renal artery. Now what is happening to efferent arteriole? This efferent arteriole, it divides. This efferent arteriole, it will divide. So it will divide and it will, it will branch and it branches and supplies blood to proximal and distal convulsions. So you can see a, a group of capillaries which is supplying blood to proximal and distal convulsions. So this area is called peritubular network. Peritubular. Surrounding the tubule there is a network of capillaries. And some of these capillaries, they, they travel parallel they travel they travel parallelly to Henry's loop some of these capillaries which are coming from efferent arteriole they, they supply blood to proximal distal convulsions and also they they it travels parallelly to Henry's loop the blood flow in 
so this this blood capillary is called vasa recta the blood flow in this blood capillaries is opposite to the urine flow inside the henry slip see urine flow here is in this fashion but blood flow here is in the reverse fashion yeah and uh, these two are also cross connected so this capillary this network of capillaries which are supplying to henry slip that area it is called vasa recta and note the direction of blood flow it is just opposite to the urine flow inside the henry slip now after supplying blood to proximal distal convulsions by peritubular network and vasa recta supplying blood to henry slip the blood is now taken outside is now taken outside the blood there is collected and taken outside so it is this this is taken outside by peritubular venule it is called peritubular venule now peritubular venule after it combines with other other blood vessels and finally it becomes renal vein uh, after combining with so many times with other other blood vessels finally it becomes renal vein and it goes outside and becomes part of post caval vein renal artery the, the blood vessel which is bringing blood to the kidneys the renal artery comes from the systemic arch or dorsal aorta systemic arch becomes dorsal aorta from dorsal aorta renal artery comes it it brings oxygenated blood it gives it to kidneys from renal artery out re repeated branching renal artery becomes efferent artery the efferent arteriole becomes glomerulus becomes efferent arteriole then becomes peritubular network of blood capillaries and vasa recta and again these two all combine together and becomes a peritubular venule which again combine together to form finally a renal vein which goes outside it's taking deoxygenated blood from the kidneys and becomes part of post caval vein 